Hey guys, welcome back to another Warframe video and continuing my series with Lore Behind the Frames. Today, let's cover Wisp. So, let's start off. What the heck is a Wisp, actually, right? So, what it is, it is it's kind of like a ghostly looking light in a wooded area, usually a wet wooded area, and it, it looks freaky, right? And I know what you may first be thinking, it's, it's a firefly. It's not a firefly because fireflies are too small and their glow isn't as bright. And it's also the wrong color. As well as glow worms. Well, one of them, the female is like, they do glow, but they don't fly. And the male ones, they do fly, but they don't glow. So it's not that either. So, And it's not like fungus, illuminating fungus, because it doesn't move. So automatically it's not these things. So what is this? And in case you're wondering, it's just some people out in the wilderness with flashlight. No, because this has been transpiring in all parts of the world since the dawn of man. Like we've been seeing this since the since we were able to tell each other stories uh, in all cultures. That's what I'm trying to say, all cultures. And because so many different cultures witnessed this, a lot of different explanations for what it could possibly be came into being. So some people thought it was a uh, fire from Nagas, right? Uh, some other people thought it was Fey. Some other people thought it was a pyro elemental. And as for pretty much everyone else in the world, they just wrote this off as ghost. And not always just like your that that's directly you seeing a ghost know that that's a ghost doing that so it's like a ghost light or a ghost lantern you know they're lighting the way either so they could see where they're going or what some people think so they could lure you in and then do whatever you know with you i guess probably the modern term for this these days is a spirit orb um but i'm gonna circle back to that probably later and go into a whole tangent about it but for now, just note that s some people are saying that this is like not just a light from a ghost, but this is like energy that a ghost is, a spirit is collecting, you know? They're harnessing energy and you're able to see that accumulation of, you know, the charge. So I know what some people may be thinking because I've had a lot of friends like this in my life you're just gonna dismiss it as like it's just mumbo jumbo people seeing things or made up stories however when there's this many people all around the world throughout all of time describing the same exact thing in the same exact situation the odds add up that this is not you know a hallucination or a make-believe or whatever like they're actually seeing something so then begs the question is what is actually being seen then so there's a few scientific hypotheses as to what it could possibly be. One is before there's an earthquake, the rocks themselves of the earth creating this friction and becoming compressed with each other creates this luminescence, which they're saying may possibly be, you know, the wisp. Sure, I guess, but there's not always an earthquake anywhere near where all these wisps are seen. So maybe sometimes that accounts for some of them, but the majority of them throughout all of history, that's not the case. Or else our world would be nonstop shaking everywhere. And that's not the case. Another strong hypothesis that uh, scientists have put out there is they're saying perhaps, since it's always in like uh, swampy, you know, bogs and stuff like this and uh, wetlands, that perhaps it is like swamp gas it's basically methane you know bubbles of methane and then it like you know in rare circumstance like under the right conditions like temperature wise and stuff like that it might spontaneously combust and it'll burn in the correct hue like the bluish hue it's supposed to be and then it may be what we're actually what everyone's actually seeing right this is possible. This may be a strong possibility for the majority of them seen. However, they're not only seen in wetland location. It's not just only swamps and stuff like that. You can see them in a lot of wooded areas that have no water. 
So this can explain everything that people are seeing. So the next scientific hypothesis is that sometimes when there's storms, electric storms, thunderstorms, uh, the air gets ionized so you can find these, you know, balls of photon throughout places like sometimes they're just somewhere inside the storm's location. Um, that's what science says and it's, you know, they have proof of this, that this, this is a thing. Um, however, they're saying like, uh, one one odd thing that they say about this is like there is so much energy inside of that ball of photon that if you touch it you'll probably burn to death <laughs> it'll burn your hand off or whatever when i first learned this hypothesis i found it very interesting because it basically it rang two bells in my mind at the same time one is basically what spiritual people have been saying since the dawn of time that that the orbs are not a ghost that they are energy being collected and secondly, you know that whole thing where like sometimes people are like locked from the inside in a room with no way out and they like just spontaneously self-combust with like nothing to, you know, ignite them in the first place. And, you know, it's just like, what the fuck? This kind of explains that without them even realizing it, because if there is an electrical storm, right, and there is a ball of photon somewhere and then somebody sees that ball of photon sometimes they're trapped in a room you know like a bathroom or something and they see that photon ball and they touch it theoretically scientists are saying you would probably burn to death well these people are burning to death and there's no explanation as to what burned them maybe that's what it is the ball of photon from the electrical storm so take this as a note you know if you ever go out into the woods or something or you see an orb in your basement or something because you're curious if these things are real Perhaps if you do see one, try not to touch it. Just saying. Anyway, as much as I like this hypothesis because it is kind of in sync with the whole spiritual viewpoint of this, it still is not flawless because wisps, orbs don't just sit in one spot or hover in one spot and that's it until they, you know, dissolve into nothingness. No, they move. That's the whole point. That's why they're named that. They're named Will of Wisp because the wisps have a will of their own like they have some kind of they move with intelligence um that's how it's supposed to be and you may be like what do i know well i have first hand experience because i've actually seen one before so a while back i didn't play warframe because i was living in this area here <laughs> i'm gonna put a picture that i took on one foggy day um, this is where I lived for a few years and I, I couldn't play Warframe here because the internet there was shit. However, it was a really cool place to live. Um, but I not only saw a quote-unquote wisp there, I had actually seen one without revealing my age when I was younger. <laughs> I had seen one when I was younger. And I could tell you from her first-hand experience, they do move like there's some intelligence behind it. When I first saw this, when I f saw my first one for the first time, I didn't actually know what it was. I had no reference points to be like, oh, that's an orb or that's a wisp or that's this. I had no fucking idea what I was looking at. I was just like, what the fuck is that? And it wasn't two years later where, you know, shows started to come out. Like, I think my first exposure to what an orb was, was on an MTV show where they would like send teenagers to go investigate paranormal places and then scare the crap out of them <laughs> so they'll quit um it was a fun show but that was i think that was the first time i ever saw it and that was years after i had seen my first orb or wisp whatever you want to call it there was also no youtube or tiktok or instagram none of this stuff existed back then for the record a note that may annoy people is lots of people have like pictures of orbs and stuff like that i'm sorry to disappoint you but that's not real. That's like dust and lens flare. I'm sorry to a lot of people, including my own mother. I'm sorry. But that's not what an orb looks like. So to drop some quick lore in here, I'm going to try to wrap it up as quick as I can. But Jack of Lanterns, right? <laughs> Let's get into this really quick. He's basically like Frank from Shameless. He's drunk. He's a loser. He's lazy. But he'll outsmart you. He'll out street smart you and hustle you and trick you every time right uh, so what happens is he eventually dies um, and whatever's coming to reap him he makes a deal with him 
uh, you know, he tries to outsmart him. And he does, he tricks him and he gets, in short, he's never gonna be reaped. He's never gonna go to the underworld. However, he's just gonna roam the earth for all of eternity. And he'll never go to move on to whatever the afterlife is. Whatever was reaping him, you know, depending on whatever religion you're going with, whatever was reaping him feels bad for him. And they basically give him like an ember of the underworld, an ember of hell. Uh, a piece of coal that will burn for all of eternity because you can't put out the flames of hell. He was given this ember to illuminate his way because, you know, sure when the veil is thinnest, both sides could see each other, but on a normal day today, it's not so easy. So this would make his life easier to maneuver. And he put it in a lantern, of course. And this is Jack of Lanterns. This is where that whole legend comes from. And that is a wisp. That light you're supposed to see in the woods is supposed to be someone like Jack or Jack himself, you know, roaming around. So let's move on to the frame. So, Wisp. Um, is she a witch? An enchantress? Is she a ghost? Is she a fae? Well, it depends. How do you want to see her? Like, what do you think a Wisp is? And then, therefore, that's what she is, right? Moving on, so her passive, when she jumps up in the air, when she's airborne, it's not that she's invisible, it's that you no longer are able to see her. Which is very well done, because this is how Fae are supposed to be, and this is how ghosts are supposed to be. They're not invisible, it's just you lack the capability of detecting them. Moving on to her first ability, the Reservoir, so this is actually good as well, which is kind of like you can get buffed in certain aspects either positively or negatively which I went over in my fave video and I probably talked about a million times in other videos when talking about ghosts and deities and stuff like that so this makes sense as well this is good her second ability will of the wisp is actually good too but it's something I didn't discuss earlier which you cast yourself forward but you're not really going forward it's just to confuse enemies into thinking you are where you aren't, and you aren't where you are, kind of thing. Which is one theory that some people had put forth saying that the Wisp in lore are tricksters. They're just trying to manipulate you and, tr and trick you and lure you places. So her third ability, Breach Surge, bravo, bravo. Because like I was trying to explain earlier with this, one of the scientific hypotheses is that it may be photon, electrically charged photon, when there's a thunderstorm in the area. And what did science say? They said if you touch that thing, you will probably burn to death because that's how much energy is in there, that's how hot it is. And if that's true, right, if the fairy light, if the corpse candles, if the orbs, if the wisp are freaking this, just photon, electrically charged photon in the air, um, and you touch it and you burn, this is, this is matching, like somebody did their homework here, bravo. As well as the fact that it seems to move with a type of intelligence, even though it's just homing, it looks like intelligence from a third person's point of view. Her fourth ability, Soulgate, some may think that it's like the hardest one for me to pinpoint with Floor, but no, this one actually is really smooth as well. Um, you see, because there's a few things. First, one of the theories is that is that the uh, wisps are fey lights, right? And if they're fey lights, that means it's controlled by fey. And if you saw my Oberon and Titania video, you know that fey are from an alternate dimension. So if fey can open up dimensional doorways, they can perhaps open up dimensional doorways to anywhere, including the sun, right? And if they're fire elementals, this is even more likely, right? However, if wisps are just lanterns of the dead, and this actually makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. However, perhaps this is all of the lore combined together. Anyway, I guess that's about it for now guys. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.